With every new Star Wars story comes a list of little details, easter eggs, and fun facts. Today I'll be covering everything I noticed in the audio drama Dooku Jedi Lost by Kavan Scott. Some spoilers for the story are ahead. Many characters from Asajj Ventress's past are mentioned, including Kai Narek and Halstead, both of whom were briefly shown in the Clone Wars episode Night Sisters. But we also get mention of the pirate Kursk, who was first created in Legends as Narek's murderer. In Jedi Lost, he captures Asajj and forces her to fight in a gladiatorial pit, similar to her first appearance in the Tartakovsky series. Dooku recruits her from the fighting pit in both versions of the story. Tara Sinube, another Clone Wars character, is seen in his younger days as a member of the Jedi Council. We learn that Dooku's family name is, in fact, Sereno. Long ago, the planet was part of the Sith Empire until the patriarch of the Sereno family led the charge against their occupiers, driving them off the planet. The rest of the people vowed to follow his leadership, and the planet was named after him. The Sereno line continued all the way to Dooku. I'd be interested to see how his death affected his homeworld since he had no heirs as far as we know. Dooku has a ship called the Windrunner, which is a holdover from Star Wars Legends. It first appeared in the Agents of the Empire comic. We learn a little more about the Seekers of the Jedi, the members of the Order who found Force-sensitive children across the galaxy and took them to Coruscant for training. A new character named Eula Braylon had a child while she was on her mission and brought him back, claiming he was simply one of the children she had found. When her lie is discovered, she is put on probation working in the Jedi Archives, which seems to be the Order's go-to punishment. We see them use it on Ahsoka in the Clone Wars and on Prosit Dibs in the Mace Windu comic. The Towers of the Jedi Temple are named in this story, which I don't believe is a first for the canon, but their names don't pop up often. So, just in case, we have the Temple Spire, surrounded by the Tower of First Knowledge, the Reassignment Council Tower, the High Council Tower, and the Tower of Reconciliation. Siphodius was the childhood friend of Dooku from the planet Manashi, the son of a fisherman. We knew he had the gift of foresight already, but we get to see it in action a few times throughout the story, and it doesn't sound pleasant at all. I believe we get to actually see his premonition of the Clone Wars that eventually leads him to order the Clone Army. His friendship with Dooku makes the eventual order for his murder all the more heartbreaking. We get to learn more about the members of the Lost Twenty, although at this point in time they are simply called the Lost. Most of them are said to have left and disappeared. Some became renowned leaders. At least one Jedi Master named Radaki fell to the dark side and became Darth Krall, and he was said to have won the Battle of Wasted Years and attained the Nightmare Conjunction. Neither of those names mean anything to me, I think they're new. We also hear about a Padawan named Teradin, who was from an era referred to as the High Republic, and he was actually kicked out of the Jedi Order for being too much of a troublemaker. Dooku and sifo learn about a secret room in the Jedi Archives from Teradine's journal known as the Bogan Collection. Boga, or Bogan, is another term for the dark side of the Force, so basically they find a collection of ancient Sith and dark side relics, including the helmet of Momin from the Lando and Darth Vader comics. We've actually seen the Bogan Collection in the Darth Vader comics as well, although it sounds like they moved it after Dooku and sifo discovered it. The Sorcerers of Tuned get a mention. They were introduced way back in the Lando Calrissian adventures with the dark side sorcerer Roker Gepta. In Legends, they had a very storied past, going as far back as the Great Hyperspace War, which was about 5,000 years before the films. The Unetti tree, planted in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, is said to have originally sat in the heart of the first Jedi Temple on Ossus. That planet first appeared in the old Legends Tales of the Jedi comics as the site of one of the first major Jedi temples. I think Dooku's statement in the story is erroneous because the Jedi have likely forgotten about Octo. It sounds like they've forgotten many of their old histories and rituals, including something called the Ritual of Three, which gives possible significance to the arm wraps worn by Asajj Ventress, Rey, and other characters. The planet Proto-Branch was first established in a Legends short story, but it appears in Jedi Lost as an agricultural world that was also a major producer of Bacta for the galaxy. It's the home of the Bival species. Its environmental control was said to be second only to Coruscant, which reminded me of the systems that were detailed in the old X-Wing series when Rogue Squadron was tasked with infiltrating and lowering Imperial defenses on Coruscant. We learn that the Citadel, seen in the Clone Wars, is still in use. It was originally built as a prison to hold rogue Jedi, but it sounds like they have a grim-sounding correctional facility for Jedi who have visions. sifo master is determined to keep him out of there. Qui-Gon Jinn mentions I'm a gun die, the Jedi Master who nobly sacrifices his life to save the Twi'leks in the Clone Wars episode Supply Lines. 
Dooku teaches Qui-Gon how to use the Force to transcend physical pain, claiming it was created by Jedi Master Crucitorn. That Force ability was called Crucitorn in Star Wars Legends. Chancellor Kalpana makes his first actual appearance in canon, although he was mentioned before in the book Tarkin. He was the Chancellor directly before Valorum, who was first mentioned in the Legends book Darth Plagueis. Queen E.K. of the Naboo is also mentioned as a reference to Star Wars author E.K. Johnston, who wrote the Ahsoka book and, more recently, Queen's Shadow. And that's everything I noticed. I'm positive I missed some details because it's a little harder to catch everything when you can't read it. So if you caught something I missed, make sure to leave it in the comments. If you're interested in listening to Dooku Jedi Lost for free, consider picking it up on Audible. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained, or click on the link in the description, sign up for a free trial, and you'll get a credit for one audiobook, and you can use that right away on Dooku Jedi Lost. Or you can get any number of Star Wars books, or get any book you want. The point is, you'll get a free audiobook, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.